and welcome to this edition of Culture Mosaic. As COVID-19 is casting a shadow all over the world, apart from keeping our physical health vigilant to deal with the pandemic, keeping our mind healthy and positive is also very important. Therefore, we hope that through little stories featured in our program, you can find some little joy and energy during your weekend. And remember, beauty is still around even in time of pandemic. One of such kind of beauty is a special land in the Lolo Chai Mountains, where people live in earthen houses to keep the traditional and cultural aspect of the local ethnic group. Moving on to Ho Chi Minh City, as you may know, the city is dealing with COVID-19 now, but a tender Ho Chi Minh City through the views of a Filipino artist can help add more positive energy to the overall situation. And last but not least, let's learn how experts are spending their time during social distancing and maybe we can learn some tips from them. So, stay with us. A fairy world in the Lolo Chai Mountains. A tender Ho Chi Minh City through the views of a Filipino artist. And creative and meaningful ways expats are spending time during social distancing. Now, let's begin with some local news. Two Vietnamese film projects, including Memento Mori Water and If Wood Could Cry, It Would Cry Blood, are due to participate in the 24th Asian Project Market as part of the upcoming Busan International Film Festival 2021, which is scheduled to run from October the 12th to the 14th in South Korea. Memento Mori Water is a film directed by Marcus Mạnh Cường Vũ and producers Nguyễn Hoàng Diệp and Nguyễn Trinh Hoan. The movie tells the story of Ha, a mother who accompanies her son Nam, who has bone cancer. The event opened for Ha the door to humanity, sympathy, sharing and enlightenment. Meanwhile, if wood could cry, it would cry blood is the debut movie of young director Nguyễn Phan Linh Dan. Nguyễn Phan Linh Dan is a familiar name to observers of the Busan Film Festival, having previously participated in the event back in 2019 as a director of photography of The Secret of the Wind. Vogue Australia recently listed local designer Lim Zha Khang as one of the eight emerging international talents to watch out for in the field of fashion. According to an article published last week, Vogue Australia put together the top eight designers based on the nominations from famous fashionista and experts around the world. Khang, owner of Zha Studios, was selected as the best in fresh talent from Vietnam. The renowned publication quoted Lisa Ruffo, buying manager of luxury fashion retailer Moda Operandi, that Khang has embodied the simplicity and elegance of Vietnamese culture in a way that feels fresh and innately feminine, drawing on traditional Vietnamese craftsmanship to deliver precise tailoring and distinctive designs. A large number of local artists based both domestically and abroad participated in a virtual concert held on August the 8th in Hanoi with the primary aim to raise funds for the country's COVID-19 vaccine fund. The ladies' event marks the second time the concert has been held. The virtual concert featured big names of the Vietnamese music scene, including Le Ca Chậm Lý, the lap band, musician Vũ Quang Trung, saxophonist Trần Mạnh Tuấn, and the four Vietnamese divas Thanh Lam, Mỹ Linh, Hồng Nhung, and Hà Trần. It also involved international art troops from India, Sri Lanka and the Philippines. Through the event, audiences were also able to listen to the stories in the epicenter by photographer Minghua, who witnessed and recorded touching stories of Ho Chi Minh City during this period. 
Also on August the 8th, a special concert titled Vững Tâm Vượt Qua Đại Dịch or Unified to Overcome the Pandemic brought together artists from all over the country. The show was organized by the Embassy of Romania in Vietnam, connecting artists from home and was broadcast live on multiple channels. The event featured many artists, including singer-songwriter Si Luân, opera singer Đào Tố Loan, and some artists Thu Phương. Each performance is a sincere thank from the artists to the frontline workers in the pandemic, as well as to the audience who have always supported them, sending the message of solidarity and affirming the healing power of art. One thousand works by children will inspire frontline workers battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Launched on August the 8th, the V Một Việt Nam Tất Thắng or For a Triumphant Vietnam is a national drawing and writing contest for children of 4 to 16 who have had or are being treated for cancer or other serious diseases. Entries may reflect a pure, honest view of life or wishes and hopes for a brighter future. Participants are free to express themselves in various formats, including drawing, poetry, stories, comedy, letters, or prose, with no limitation on the number of works and forms. The spirit of optimism and love of life conveyed by participants in their works will be a meaningful gift for the community, especially doctors and nurses on the COVID front line. Modern house design must be familiar with most people nowadays. However, things are completely opposite in Lolochai, a village in the mountains of Hazang province. Here, many people have abandoned solid brick homes to build and live in earthen houses. Want to know why? We'll find out in this week, Culture and Lifestyle. This is Lolochai a village located at the northernmost point of Vietnam and adjacent to the People's Republic of China. Near Lolo Chai village is the Lung Gu flagpole, a national flagpole that marks the territorial sovereignty of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Since it's located in a border area with rocky terrain, life here was quite difficult in the past. Thì là, là trong mấy năm nay thì là chuyển sang là du lịch thì thật sự là các hộ dây cũng là so với khá hơn mấy năm trước. Trong cô chúng tôi là làm du lịch là là đã làm du lịch thì là đúng là cắt theo truyền thống. Ví dụ nhà cửa thì làm truyền thống của dân tộc mình mà cũng là nhà chiến tường này. Nhà ở trên mái nhà thì lộc ngoài ông rông này. Có cái là ao uống thì cũng là theo truyền thống của dân tộc địa phương mình. Tôi đang làm nhà chỉnh tường của phong tục thực quán của Lô Lô Chạy. Thì nó mát hơn mà nó đắt hơn nữa. Hết tầm 500 triệu. Cái nhà gạch, xây gạch thì nó chỉ rơi tầm độ 300 triệu thôi. Nhưng mà đây là truyền thống của Lô Lô. Thế đắt mấy cũng phải làm. Làm cái nhà gỗ thì có thể nó đông khách hơn cái nhà xây. In 2011, there was only one household that offered homestay services in Lô Lô Chạy. At the time, there were very few families who had houses made of earth with yin and yang roof tiles. After realizing the potential that offering accommodation services to visitors the Lungku National Flagpole had, the number of traditional houses in the village increased significantly. 
thôi cho tôi là đang làm du lịch thì là là không phải là tự phát ý là đây là có một cái tổ du lịch ý là có một cái tổ trưởng có một cái phó tổ tôi cũng là tổ trưởng thì tôi có vận động là có mấy mô nhà là phải tài khoản năm đến sáu chợ hoa ý là mình trồng hoa thì mình sẽ thu hút khách để khách được khách sẽ nghỉ hoa là là à, ví dụ dưới xô thì hoa khác mà trên này hoa là khác thì họ sẽ chuộng ảnh quay phí thì họ sẽ ở lại đây Chào các bác vâng còn là rộng rãi thế vâng thưa bác ạ vâng còn này cũng là to phết này còn này chắc là ô tô vào thoải mái nhỉ vâng đi làm ô tô này đón khách vâng vâng thế thì cái cầu này này lực bằng cái gì đấy chú em cũng đang phân vân là chỉ biết lập lập bằng cái gì đây hiện tại bao giờ mình đã làm du lịch hết thì thì ở trên mái nhà mình lập bằng máy ông dư đi đó vâng thì ở trên mái thì lập máy ông dư sẽ là ở xung quanh đây xem mình lái để mở hàng để mình trồng hoa ở đây này này với là ở bên kia đó là khách thì mình có phải có thể là vừa đó khách trong ngủ nhé sau mình là nấu nước cho khách đó mình có làm cho nấu nước là 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 mình làm cho đúng giờ tầm mình mình không làm cho nấu cho nhà hàng đó Thanks to the efforts of locals, Lulotai village has put itself on the tourism map. Its picturesque beauty and the kindness of locals have helped attract a large number of tourists. There are even people who have chosen this place as their second home. Thanh Thị Hoa, a tour guide at the Lung Cú Phạc Po, is among them. Để lựa chọn Lũng Cú là mảnh đất thứ hai, là quê hương thứ hai của tôi thì cũng có rất là nhiều lý do. Lý do đầu tiên tôi chọn Lũng Cú là bởi vì nó gắn liền với công việc. Lý do thứ hai nữa đó là bởi vì người dân ở trên đây rất là thân thiện, rồi cảnh sắc thì tuyệt vời, rồi là khí hậu thì trong lành. Có những nơi mà đến thì là cảm thấy là mình không thể quên được. Today, Lolochai is known by many as a fairy tale village. This does not mean that it's a village full of fairies. Fairy tales are written by locals and come from sacred stories that are associated with efforts to preserve Vietnam sovereignty. From signature landmarks to the small alleys, from modern coffee shops to crowded street food stalls, from a tranquil temple visit to a thrilling bike ride, never before has Ho Chi Minh City's essence been captured in such a way that Daniel Tinkunko did in his stunning artwork series titled 100 Views of Saigon, broadcasting 100 scenes from across the southern Vietnamese metropolis. 100 Views of Saigon has been receiving massive support on various social media. So in our On The Mic this week, we have a chance to have an online chat with the Filipino artist himself and hear him talk about creativity and the love he has for the city that he was not born in. You know that feeling like getting to know a friend and you always find something interesting in your friend that you always keep wanting to see them. Ho Chi Minh City is like that for me, like a very good friend for life. Every time I go out, it just feels, you know, fresh and new to me. Walking around, you would see some certain kind of view that, you know, would inspire you. And from all those inspirations, a stunning series of artworks was created, depicting 100 different locations in Ho Chi Minh City, from famous places such as the Landmark 81 to local stores selling pho and vermicelli on the streets, with the unmistakable red plastic chairs, courtesy of the artist's keen attention to details. For local residents of Ho Chi Minh City, these places might be all too familiar. But for Daniel Tinkungo, a Filipino illustrator that has just arrived in Vietnam not too long ago, all of these places, whether a tourist destination or a small quarter of the street, are like such a colorful canvas that he just couldn't ignore. Thus, 100 View of Saigon was born as a unique way for Daniel to discover more about the city that he's fallen for. 
So what you've just seen is the briefest look into Daniel Stinkunko's 100 Views of Saigon project. And in today's On The Mic, we have the honor and privilege to have him on the show to discuss all there is to know about this project and more. Um, so hello, Daniel Tinkunko. Uh, how have you been? Ah, thank you so much. A uh, good day to you all. It's nice to meet you. Um, so far, so good, um, even in lockdown. <laughs> But yeah, I'm still doing fine. So I have taken a very deep look into your 100 Views of Saigon project. And I must say, I am really impressed with how you are able to capture all of the essence of Ho Chi Minh City. The colors, the vibe, just everything in general. How, do you, how are you able to capture all of that? Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Um, so the 100 Views of uh, Saigon is a continuation of my previous series, which is 100 Views of Manila. So both projects have been inspired by uh, Hiroshige's uh, 100 Famous Views of Edo. Um, so it was a way for me to overcome this fear of drawing backgrounds and landscapes. Um, and also it has evolved to become a way for me to learn about the city. So, you know, to find some interesting stories, hidden gems, know about the local culture, you know, beyond the usual touristy stuff. Is there any similarities and differences when you approach two of the projects? Or do you learn anything in 100 Views of Manila that you decide to apply for your next project, 100 Views of Saigon? In terms of um, similarity, I'd like people to, you know, have to look at it with fresh eyes. Uh, look at their city differently, uh, especially those places that are often neglected or taken for granted. And also those known key places also, you know, to be, you know, to give them like a second look to these places. In terms of differences, um, I'd say, I guess not much, except that um, for the kind of light and mood that the cities give. So of course, Manila has a certain kind of mood and tone, uh, whereas, you know, um, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City also has a certain kind of light and color. What struck me here when I was going around during my first few weeks in the city was that the light is pretty strong. Um, as also what my um, artist friend would say, like he also notices like it's a very strong light that gives a certain kind of contrast and warmth. So how it um, just shines on the buildings, on the streets, on the trees, um, it brings out a certain color of vibrancy, which hopefully I'm able to depict well in the uh, artworks. It's more of like, I just want to give a kind of um, color and mood to the city that's, you know, that would bring up uh, memories from people. And also, you know, even if I present a certain view in its present state, um, hopefully it could remind people of their maybe childhood or like some special moments during their time there. Do you have any details that you tend to gravitate to when uh, drawing Ho Chi Minh City? I do know that cuisine is one of them. <laughs> At least? Ah, yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, just talking about cuisine in Ho Chi Minh City alone, <laughs> it's so much. There's, there's so many. Indeed. Actually, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, street food <laughs> and uh, like some restaurants there. Because um, being a foodie myself, uh, one of the reasons I go around the city is because of, you know, looking for good places to eat. Um, so, because prior to coming here, I didn't realize that it's a food paradise. And I think it doesn't, you know, have much of a, that, that reputation, like, you know, in a lot of places worldwide. It's, I think only like a few people I know really go to um, Vietnam, go to Ho Chi Minh City and say, ah, oh, I've eaten a lot of delicious food there. There's just more to Vietnamese food than ban mi and pho, which uh, I admit, that's what I believed before coming here. <laughs> and. What else do you believe? What else do you believe? Let's demystify the myth right away. What else do you believe? <laughs> Vietnamese coffee is just uh, cafe soda. But then there's uh. a, lot, a lot of different kinds, like salt coffee, egg coffee, um, coconut coffee, uh, all just so good. The COVID-19 pandemic affects everyone's life, and creatives like Daniel are no exception having to juggle between his duty as the art director of a reputable advertising agency and other personal projects, plus the restrictions brought about by social distancing orders, he was still able to finish 100 views of Saigon in less than two years, mostly at home. 
He started the series when COVID-19 first hit Vietnam and social distancing orders of various levels started to be implemented. And as fate would have it, when he finished, the city went into lockdown again, now with even stricter regulations. However, he still manages to find ways to stay sane and keep the creativity coming. You know, with the uh, current social distancing period, you have to stay home a lot. And I assume that, you know, being a creative, it, you need, really need to go outside to experience new inspiration and everything. So how do you keep yourself inspired and creative amid this pandemic time? It's actually a bit of a challenge because, yeah, true, a lot of inspiration is out there, especially with the kind of work I'm doing as well, especially for all of us. But um, the way I look at it, um, I still try to keep my normal schedule. So actually, I could choose, you know, to sleep sleep in a bit more. But maybe I, I just want to, you know, keep that certain kind of schedule again as a way, you know, to keep things going. I still work on um, a lot of uh, new artworks for personal and summer commission. Um, I also try to, you know, um, learn some more skills. Like um, I get to cook a lot more compared to uh, before. So it kind of fills my days as well. So, and also uh, I'm able to look through my, um, the books that I have again, so you know, to gain inspiration. And then I think it's just a matter of, you know, keeping yourself occupied so that, you know, don't go crazy. Although sometimes I feel like I am going crazy. <laughs> so you have your commission and then your personal project and then also being an art director on top of all that. How do you manage to keep your work-life balance? I try to manage myself to be able to do something every day. So I, I tried to develop this morning routine. I was um, reading about um, Austin Cleon. So he's a writer who um, wrote about in his book, Keep Going. Uh, he mentioned uh, Joseph Campbell um, about how every creative or person should create this kind of bliss station in the morning. So it's like this time and space where you have this creative incubation free from all kinds of uh, distractions where no one knows you, no one disturbs you. It's only your time that you can do um, all these things for yourself. And then after that, you can do all your responsibilities for the day. So I usually work around 7 a.m., sometimes earlier, sometimes later. And then I try to finish like at least an hour or two per day. It's a way for me to kind of build up uh, this volume of work rather than, you know, just trying to wait for inspiration. Uh, final question. What's next after 100 views of Saigon? There's something cooking um, that will be served soon. So still inspired <coughs> by um, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City and Vietnam as a whole. So um, yeah, stay tuned and hope everyone will like it when I serve it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Daniel Tinkunko, for joining on the mic today. And I really hope that your future projects will receive even more raving uh, attention from the public, you know, in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and hopefully get to see you soon. of social distancing can get boring since we have to avoid going out, seeing friends and family, and participating in activities. For foreigners in Vietnam, it is no different. However, many expats have taken advantage of this period to do useful things such as learning new skills, teaching fitness, or taking part in fundraising activities for the community. So what are some of the creative ways foreigners in Vietnam are spending their time effectively and meaningfully? Let's find out more in this week's Connecting Cultures. A stunning bird's eye view of Hanoi's beloved Ho Tai or Westlake. This was Sean Nolans, an expat from Britain idea to explore more of his surroundings while Hanoi is implementing strict social distancing measures. Since he can't leave his house as often as before, he's decided to see more of the neighborhood he's lucky to call home with the help of a drone. The video quickly gained a lot of attention on social media. The idea for the flycam video um it was quite spontaneous, to be honest. Um, like I said, I go up onto the roof almost every morning 
and I couldn't believe how quiet Teho looked. Obviously I wanted to go outside and film it, but I knew I couldn't. So I decided that the, the drone would be the best and safest way to do so. I've shot quite a lot of films now, travel films, while I've been in Vietnam. But this video of Teho has been by far the most popular. I think the reason is, at the moment, everybody can relate to how surprising and how strange it is to see just how quiet the streets are in Hanoi at the moment. During this period, Sean has been spending his days reading, cooking and exercising. He's also challenging himself to learn new skills and do something new and meaningful every day. Definitely the most meaningful thing that I've done during this period of social distancing was making a video for two charities. One, Brett's Blankets in Texas in the United States and the other is here in Vietnam, Blue Dragon Children's Foundation. I put together a video for them to help fundraise enough money to buy blankets for those that need them in Dien Bien Phu province. And that was by far the most meaningful project that I've worked on. Hello everyone, uh, this is a warm up for our rest. Uh, we Maintaining a healthy and positive lifestyle while staying at home is also something Loli Anderson is prioritizing. During this period, she's been organizing online yoga classes and uploads them to her website so that people can access them. The class is free and students can choose to donate if they want, with all funds going to the Blue Dragon Children's Foundation. One thing that all these expats have in common is that they share the desire to do meaningful things for the communities and people around them. Luan Chen, an overseas Vietnamese from Denmark, has continued working full-time online during social distancing in Ho Chi Minh City, but also uses her free time to volunteer. She's organizing an online fundraiser event for Little Rose Warm Shelter, or My Em Hoa Hong Nhau. The NGO was established and registered in 1992 and is home for underprivileged girls of 8 to 18 years old from all over Vietnam. Other expats have joined her in this work. I feel very privileged to be an expat here in Vietnam and contributing to the community, giving back, and we're happy to be uh, working together with other amazing long-term volunteers. We all come from different backgrounds and different countries. It's, it's so much fun to um, get together and do something that is very meaningful and is making a big difference uh, for the underprivileged girls here in Vietnam. Social distancing couldn't stop Ricky, a trainer from India, from teaching. His training sessions still attract many participants and he's also been using his time effectively by completing a nutrition course and setting up a podcast that provides listeners with stories on health and fitness. This podcast is to talk about ordinary fitness people. Expats in Vietnam have many ways to spend their social distancing time effectively and meaningfully. They are looking at this period as a time to look deeper into themselves while also supporting others. And that is the end of our program. If you'd like to catch us online, download the VTV Go app from your Google Play or App Store, or tune in our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash vtv4go for more of our programs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of Culture Mosaic. Goodbye for now.